Hi, everyone, and welcome to Theater Talk, where we talk about all things theater. And today's guest is Greg Washington. Hi, Greg. Hey, how are you doing? Or do you prefer Gregory? I, I'm a Greg person. I am Greg, Greg Le legally now, too, uh, for SAG after. I am Greg Washington. You know, we got to stick to those what we tell SAG after or to the unions. We got to stick to those, but. Absolutely. Absolutely. There was a phase when I was younger where I went by my middle name. It was Seth. And to this day, right. <clears throat> my sixth grade teacher still calls me Seth. And, uh, you know, well. <laughs> so you know, I feel we like gotta... the only person that calls me Gregory is like my mom. Like, and I know she's upset. Like, I'm like, oh, that's my old name. You're upset. <laughs> Got it. Absolutely. So, uh, Greg, you're from Louisiana, right? Yes, sir. Where are you originally from? I am originally from Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, Lafayette. I'm from down south, too, originally from Ville Platte. So, practically, okay. yours, you know, 45 Absolutely. minutes apart. Uh, where are Absolutely. you now? Uh, now I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, Shreveport. So I'm in I Ruston, so we're still neighbors. <laughs> Still, I love that it's still almost the same distance too. It's kind of nice. Pretty much, pretty much. Um, yeah. So didn't move far away at all. Like went to school at Northwestern and then moved an hour away to Shreveport. Yeah. You and I were actually in school at the same time. You were a little ahead of me Absolutely. at Northwestern. Yeah. And uh, so, what what made you want to study theater at Northwestern? Um, honestly, this is gonna sound ridiculous so I didn't know up until I got my scholarship that I was even going to go to college like I thought I was going to take some time join the army and then pay for college that way but Northwestern was like hey like Dr. Juan met me and was like I want you to come and audition for a scholarship and I was like a scholarship to act and he was like yeah I was like that sounds weird and I didn't believe him but then I went and I checked out the campus and I auditioned for the scholarship and got the full scholarship. So I was like, I'm going to college. Like it was really like a weak decision. Um, and then the idea to stick with acting and things like that didn't come until a little bit later. Um, no, Cause I didn't like, think it was something viable. Like, I had no clue. Exactly. I think a lot of parents or a lot of people hear the word, you know, theater and they're like, why do you want to study that? Why, how is this going to be a Bible? Are you going to be a broke actor for the rest of your life or a struggling performer? Yeah. You know, I was, I had that mentality too for a little while. People asked me, yeah. well, what are you going to college for? And I was like, theater, you know, kind of said it a little quiet. <laughs> then after a while, I was like, you know what? I love this. It makes me happy. There's tons of viable careers in theater and some that actually pay really, really well. And so I started loud and proud while I was in college, like I'm studying theater. They're like, oh, that's so right. cool. And then once I started being confident in it, people started to be like, oh God, I'm jealous. I wish I could do something like that. Oh yeah. Well, you know, it's great. Like people tune into the way you say things. So when you're Absolutely. like, oh, I'm studying theater, everyone's like, oh, like sour face for everybody. When you're like, oh, I'm studying theater. like. They're excited because you're excited. And then it just kind of trickles down, which is awesome. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, and yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, it's so funny, though, that that didn't hit me. Or like the idea of what we were doing at that time didn't hit me until day one with Chris Foster. I don't know if you had, was Chris still there when you started? Yeah. Okay. So like, you're in a room with hundreds of people and like everyone's looking for a chair and he's like some of you are here on scholarships raise your hand and like all these people raise their hand he's like great look to the right of you and to the left of you by the end of this month one of them won't be here and like that moment hit me of like this is real and then seeing that month progression and seeing that he was right. Those people aren't there. And then like, I was like, oh my God, like we joined a company. We didn't go to college anymore. We joined a company. Um, so yeah, so interesting. That's so true. And it's, it is the world of theater. You know, people think it's all fun and games, but it's truly like, it's a way of life. Absolutely. You know, you've got yeah, to be dedicated to it. And it's, especially if you're in the performing realm, 
of it. You know, there's tons of things that are not performing, but especially as a performer, it comes from inside you. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to make mistakes, tons of mistakes, because putting yourself out there, things that come from inside of you, like acting or singing or right. those types of elements that come from your soul are a lot more difficult to deal with, especially on the stage in front of people. You know, uh, oh yeah, stage fright yeah. is the number one phobia in the world. And it doesn't just go on stage, it's just being in front of people in general. So it, it takes Absolutely. a lot of guts to face that. And a lot of people don't make it, especially in the college realm even. Right, well you have to think too, like that moment of standing and finding your light. Like, you don't know what that means until you hit it. And then you're like there, and this light is beaming on you. And then you feel the sweat start to fall. And then you look out in the crowd and you see those little shadows. And it's like, I'm fighting so much right now. So yeah, the idea to fly from that is so, so easy. And again, you're not realizing like, you have your little bag of tricks of where you're pulling, you know, what it is inside of you out. But it's on display for people. Like, it's like the stuff you have in is out and someone's sitting there just judging you judging you judging you hard life hard hard life it um, is you know but we do it after every show <laughs> i when i get cast in a show and I, I look at that script and i one of the hardest things to do is get in front of people and so once you're memorizing that script that's hard too you spend oh yeah. four to six weeks memorizing word for word these scripts and i often ask myself why did I sign up for this again? Like, why do I you know, do this to myself? But we do it for that adrenaline and that right. rush. And that's exactly what you're talking about. You want to fight and fight it so much. But yet Absolutely. we get so much joy from being open like that. But also for me, I think I'm doing it in service of others. I want to entertain. I want to right. enlighten people. I want to make people's day a little better by entertaining them. And right. I do it for all of the above, you know, even that I fight that fight or flight like, to make someone's life better. Well, and that connection too. You're like, I want to connect on like, it yeah, is. I want you to get it. Um, it's so funny that you use the idea of like memorizing scripts as like your example. I had a horrible story. So my freshman year, I got uh, the lead in the show. And I was told that was a huge deal. The freshman didn't really get shows, blah, 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 blah. And again, I didn't care. Like, you know, I had the arrogance about me. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever. Um, and then we had the first night we were supposed to be off book. But I had been slammed with uh, midterms. So I was not off book. But I was like, ah, I, I think I know it well enough. I'll be, I'll be fine. So we go and we're going, going, everything is going fine. And I was like, ah, I got this. And then we get to that one moment where I was like, line? And after that one mess up, I couldn't stop. Like, I couldn't remember anything else. I had never seen Dr. Parrish mad before in my life. She so chews me out in front of everybody. And I feel horrible because the nicest woman in the world is yelling at me. And I was like, what just happened? And again, I realized how real this is as a business. And I was just like, oh, my God, never again. Like, this can never happen um so now i overcompensate for scripts like i'm like i'm gonna learn everybody's lines <laughs> like just in case i have an issue it's so bad but it's so built in me now of like i can never let that happen again yeah and dr parish is we would jokingly refer to him as she was the mother of the department yeah <laughs> but it's always you know your mom you don't want to ever aggravate your mom totally. disappoint her make her mad because that's the worst chewing out yeah. ever you know, you feel so bad on many levels, you know, and it's and not I had just, that experience my first way in. Yeah, so. man, that was tough. Uh, I'm <laughs> glad you got just, over it and learned from it. You know, that's the main humbling experience. But even that, though, like that could have been made to break a person that doesn't want this life. Like, yeah. it is definitely an acceptance that you have to make of like, all right, this is how it is. Like, you know, you earn your lumps, I guess. Yeah, and theater in that aspect, it's, it's a team sport. You have to learn your lines. You know, you do your part, everyone does their part, and you come together, yeah. and if everyone did their part, things go smoothly. So you not only uh -huh. let her down, the director, but also but you everybody. let everyone 
down as well. Right. And it's also, like, well, also to just, again, the learning experience, like the build up to all of that was like upperclassmen being like, don't choke. <laughs> and me being like, why are you making such a big deal about this? Like still not accepting what happened until I'm there. And it's like, oh my God, this is what they meant. Like, I'm here. Like, yeah, I've got to grow up. I've got to get out of this. This is just something to do. And like, this is, this is something serious. Um, and which is great. Like we had a great run of the show, but I also remember one night my roommate from, at the time came to visit and it was a theater in the round. So first time I'd ever been in theater in the round at all. So I'm going and I'm doing my thing. I look at his direction and he makes some gesture that was just a rude joke that we were having around the house. And it totally, I went blank after that. Like all I could think about was I'm going to kill you. And then to pick it back up and be in that moment and pick everything back up and make sure everything still runs. I was just like life changing. Like I felt so good after it. I was like, I want to do that again. Like I have to do this again. Um, Absolutely. That like improv it, and thinking on your feet. Awesome. Oh, absolutely. Totally. totally. And it's all, and like, that's going along with what you said about that's the feeling you want again. Like I want that again. Um, which you is great. And I feel like, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Now, it was kind of like you were saying, you overcompensate compensate now in your script and your memorized learning, um, your, your script learning, memorizing your lines. And we have to know everyone's part now because it's yep. you're, you get into that moment and you got messed up. If you weren't that well prepared, it could have threw you. You could not have picked it up. Oh, yeah. But we are so programmed and ingrained to know your lines and not just your lines, but everyone's lines and be such a unit, that right. whole team spirit that you were able to pick it up and keep going and not let that mess you up. That's the beauty of what we do. And we live for that when that happens and we're able to not let anyone know we messed up. Right. No, it's so great. Um, and it's awesome because that's such a life lesson. Like, you hit those little steps, those little rocks. And like, I think as artists, artists are so good at picking that back up. Like, ah, that's fine. I'll just go around. But like most people will let that be the end of them. Like, I can't pick this back up, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's a joy of what we do, I guess. Yeah, I have, uh, I was, uh, so when I left Northwestern in 2008, I went into teaching. I was teaching in high school and we did Still Magnolias a little after that. And so this show, it's a much smaller cast and it's just those women on stage the entire time. Right. And I was running sound for the show. So I had, I had the script in front of me and we were in the middle of the show, not even the first run of it. And I watched my girls go from one page and they jumped about three or four pages in dialogue. Right. They said some dialogue for about a page or two then they jumped back to where they left off, <laughs> filled it all in, and then jumped over the things they had met, yeah. uh, already covered That's and then awesome. picked up without missing a beat. And it was beautiful. And these were high school kids. Yeah. You know, I, there's no such thing as a perfect performance. I have, and certainly have never given one. I have never seen a perfect performance ever. Yeah. You know, but the beauty of it is the audience, if you're good at your job, will never know. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so cool. So, <laughs> where, so what did you do now? I found such a neat uh, term last week about what I do now. Um, I am a multi-hyphenate um, for the entertainment business. Like, if I can, whatever way I can get my foot in the door, I'm going to do it. Um, I lucked out the... Uh, I did a little bit of acting right when we got out in film, um, when I got out of school. And I just always thought that's the way it was going to go. I was always going to have auditions. I was always going to be acting. That's not the way it works. <laughs> um, you know, as the bigger things you do, the smaller the realm gets of what you can possibly do in that. Um, so I was like, I have to find my way in. And luckily, one an alumnus, uh, Ryan Glorioso, who does casting, was like, I'm looking for another assistant. You want to come work for me? And I was like, are you being serious? And he was like, yeah. So I started working at Extras Cast. Um, and so that actually got me on set and to see the behind the camera stuff in a way that I've never seen it before. And I was like, I want to be there next. Like I'm enjoying casting, the money's great, but I want to be there next. So I got to figure out how to get there. 
Um, and luckily I just, I started working as a medic on film sets, which for me, I was like, oh, I'm going to free film school. It's the most unobtrusive job ever. You don't really do anything all day long. So I got to just watch everything um, and just make notes and figure out like, oh, this is how you do this. This is how you do this. This is how you do this. Um, so then I produced and did my own web series for like a year. Like I was just like, oh, this will be fun. I'll do this. Um, and that had some measure of success that I was like, oh, we got to do this again. And then realizing that it's hard to get people a second time around for something like that. So it's like, oh, I got to go back to film. I got to find another foot in the door. So I started production coordinating. Um, so now I think at this point, I've worked in every single department except for hair and makeup. Um, but I literally hear about a film and find, find my way in. Um, and that's worked out for me so much for getting acting gigs that I'll just be by someone and they'll be like, you act, right? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, are you SAG? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, all right, you're going to do this. <laughs> um, I'm like, great. So that's really helped uh, in ways that I never thought would work out. Um, yeah, I just work in entertainment. It's networking. You know, you never know who you're going to meet and come across. I know Ryan as well. I've, uh, I've done some acting on, in film as well, mostly extra work. Ryan did yeah. some of it. Uh, the other casting directors in this state, I've filmed in Shreveport, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, you know, all the big places. Done a couple of, I did a commercial years ago. Um, and a couple of, I did a stand-in job and a couple of indie films. You know, right. as, as performers, we try to get in, like you said, anywhere we can yeah. and meet all those new people because you never know like Ryan was like, he knew you. Hey, I'm looking for this job. Right. I want to do it. So it's, or someone just, you're just being around the right people and they can be like, hey, I'm looking for someone who can do this. Well, I know someone or I can do that. You know, it's, it's right. much, so much about what our business is, is the networking. Well, it's so great though, because also with building with that network, like I feel like you also have to make the people that you're meeting believe you're capable of doing it. Like, you know, it's not, it's not only who, you know, so you know, people always say it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, but it's also like what that person knows you're capable of doing. And I feel like some people sell themselves short on that aspect of it. Like they're so happy to meet that person. They don't take it a step further. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just been lucky that I've convinced the right people that I can do something. They're like, all right, go do it. Um, which has been great. It's so random. I had a guy ask me, a few weeks ago like how do you make it in this business and I was like honestly say yes to everything until you can afford to say no um and he didn't really get it and I was just like you're gonna get asked to do free work all the time do it that's your calling card that's people's way of seeing what you're capable of doing be great at it and then it comes back around and I was like it feels like it doesn't but it comes back around um, you know, you got to start somewhere and prove to people absolutely. and show people, like you said, that you're reliable, you know what you're doing, yep. and that you're willing to take direction. You know, you've got to build those things. I'm a firm believer. One of my life mantras is when, you know, when one door closes, another one opens. But you have to take the time to build those doors. You know, absolutely. they're just not going to magically appear. So working these free things and proving yourself and all those things just adds one more nail, one more board into that door and builds it before it can open. You know, you have to put in the work to make sure that door will open later in your life. Absolutely. And you said uh, a medic. So did you have a medical background to begin with? I did. So I did end up leaving college and joining the army for a bit. Um, and I was a medic in the army and just, I kept with my licenses and everything when I got out. I was just like, wait a minute, I should, you know, I, I should do this. Um, it was a great job. It, again, it let me network. It let me meet the right people. Um, it let me learn tons. Um, so, yeah, you know, it just kind of worked out. Again, find a skill set. <laughs> Even Absolutely. if it's not. Um, you know, and so you were able to put theater and a medical training from the army together as a career path. Absolutely. Awesome. Now, so Which you were on this <laughs> <laughs> So 
you never know. Hey, you you put the work in, and you were able to use that to build a door for you to open opportunities for you. Absolutely. You never really know what skill sets you have are gonna come together and open some portal, some door later in life really? for you. So being on set, you're learning the most. And you were mm -hmm. actually, you know, I, if I follow your Instagram, you know, we've been college classmates. So, you know, just keeping up with everyone. And you were on a lot of sets in Shreveport. What were some mm -hmm. of those uh, movies or TV series that we might recognize? Um, I, I feel like the larger ones, uh, I worked on Olympus Has Fallen with Gerard Butler um which was huge they built the white they rebuilt the white house to scale um and again i lucked out so i i got on as a medic while they were in the construction phase of that so i got to watch the white house be built which was fantastic um and then from that you know i got to see it from beginning to end like i got to see the day we pulled down the white house and i was like oh my god this is so neat um i was i did three seasons of salem which I don't know if many people watched it. I feel like it would have got it. I did. <laughs> that counts then. That counts. Um, when it started. Which is great. Yeah, when the uh, preview started showing for Salem, I'm big into the the mysticism and the magic genre right. of books. Like Harry Potter got me started. I was in high school when all that came out, and middle school. So it it kind of really got me started in reading. So when Salem came out, I was all into it. And then I started seeing right. your post from being on set and then I would watch the show and I was just like, oh, this is like, wow. You know? I learned all about non-disclosure agreements on Salem. NDAs, <laughs> um, it's a lot about our business. <laughs> I had a blast. <laughs> I had too much fun at other people's expense, but it was such a great show to work on. Like it, to work on something that's period to that scale. Um, I mean, we, we rebuilt the town of Salem and that was incredible. Um, and then once you start adding all the animals and everything else, you're like, oh my God, like I'm stepping into this time every time I come to work, um, which was so great. Again, that was another one of those moments though, where like the stunt coordinator looked over and was like, hey, I need you to do a stunt tomorrow. And I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. Um, so things just worked out and doing three seasons of anything is awesome. Um, I feel like those are the biggest things I've done, but I also was in the Iceman. Um, and I worked both sides of the camera on the Iceman. Probably anything I've done in Treeport, I've lucked out and hopefully gotten to work on both sides of the camera, which is so nice. Um, and great, anything that Millennium Studios did in Louisiana, I worked on, because I worked for them uh, solely because they built a studio here. So yeah, I don't know, 15 years of just working in the film industry and still staying in Louisiana mostly for all of it was pretty great. Yeah, there is so much film work here in Louisiana. Um, so speaking of film work in Louisiana, how has COVID affected your line in the film work? Um, COVID was painful. So I will explain my COVID experience. Um, I was, I trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but I'm also a coach um, when I'm not doing film stuff. And so I was at an associate training meeting in a hotel in Dallas when COVID was happening. Um, so as we're like, I'm sitting in a room with a bunch of fighters and fighters just don't care about anything. So I'm watching the news and I'm like, oh my God, we're all gonna die. And these fighters are like, ah, shut up. Like, it's gonna be fine. And I'm just like, no, we're gonna die. And they're like, no, no big deal. And as they're saying that, Dallas is discussing to shut down the entire city. So I'm like, how am I getting home? And they're like, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, guys, you gotta pay attention to this. And so we lucked out, the weekend finished and we got home. But systematically, I had a commercial I was working on and three commercials later that week, all shut down, <laughs> like systematically, day by day by day. I was like, well, I lost that job. Well, I lost that job. Well, I lost that job. We had a television series that was gonna get off the ground in Dallas later that month. I was like, hey, we're going to push a month and kind of see how this COVID thing works out. And then a week later, they're like, ah, we're shutting down indef indefinitely. And so it was like, okay, that's all the work I had. So now it's going to happen. Um, and now that we've been in month five, we're vastly approaching. 
I've gotten so many calls of like, hey, can you do a budget for us? We'd like to shoot in September. And I'm like, I can, but chances of shooting in September seem off. Like we're not even in phase three yet. Phase two is iffy. You can only have 50 people at a time in a group. I was like, I don't know how you're going to shoot anything. And so they're like, oh, let me call you back. And then it falls through. So yeah. this year has been like the year of things just falling through. Um, but I don't know. Self-reflection is always nice with the free time. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't stop art, but it stops making money from art with COVID. Um, yeah. Like you can still find a platform for your art. Um, just may not make any money off of it. So um, off of that topic, what have you been up to um, during this time of quarantine, in a sense? How have you adapted? Uh, um, a lot of self-care. A lot of it. Like, I feel like it's the time to find all those little nuances that you want from an actor's perspective. Like, ah, you just kind of play because you do kind of go a little stir crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had the best conversation with my cat. Um, but yeah, just a lot of trying to just figure out like what is next when the next thing happens. Um, so yeah, lots of exercise, lots of meditating, lots of reading. I probably, I read far too much, um, which can kind of get you down a weird tunnel of, but a happy tunnel. Like I think the idea is always you're an artist in some aspect, find a place for your art, wherever that may be, whether it's, you know, reading scripts, you know, writing, um, getting together with friends, like technology has helped this experience so much. I've read old shows with friends that I've worked with before and like seeing the growth in like, I remember when you did this when we were 18, but now you're so much better. Um, Catching up with friends has been great. Talking about uh, trying to film the idea of a Zoom film and trying to figure that out has been fun. Um, yeah, just different things. So many people are creative, like just feed off of that. Absolutely. You know, we're kind of in this business of, we're in the business of entertainment. There's no way around it. We like being around people, especially kind of what I do is I run a venue and other right. organizations fall under us and use us and rent us. I miss seeing people. I miss yeah. interacting with people. I miss creating. You know, we don't create our own content here as the venue as a whole. You know, we right. rent out or we hire in um, or some of our renters create their own content like the Rustin Community Theater. They're producing right. plays and stuff. But overall, I miss people in the building. I miss that connection. I miss building right. those friendships, catching up with people, or just being creative as a whole. There's a, you said something earlier, it's you have to experience it one-on-one, -on -one, kind of like being on stage. You're right. there, you're happening in the moment. I was like, someone was talking about the Hamilton film. Mm -hmm. As great as it is, I was lucky enough to see it in New York. Right, a totally different experience. Exactly. It was in August 2016. It was just after the filming. The film was, I think, was June 2016, before right. all the principals left, and I got to see it in August. As I've seen probably 50-something Broadway shows and countless other productions in community theaters, regional theaters. You know, we have a resume miles long of just experiences in theater, but right. seeing that one production live and in person it's cliche, but my jaw was dropping, Greg. Like, right. I found myself like, oh, wait, my mouth is open. And then to <laughs> watch it on film, it was equally incredible. But just something about, to quote the show, being in the room where it happens, right. is, there's nothing comparing it. You, you yeah. cannot compare the two. So for us, people like us, being in the room and creating together or being around people and doing it, online you know it's not quite the same and we just miss that connection absolutely you know, and I that's know always, other artists are going through the same thing that's always been the big argument between film or television or theater is that you know to me theater's instant gratification mm -hmm. like you're feeding off of an audience and you're just using that film you may never get that energy 
um, you hope for it. Like you always hope, like, please let, please let my scene partner give me enough <laughs> something back. Um, I feel like that's always the goal. And uh, the people I've always enjoyed working with are the people that do kind of feed that for you. But you don't get to see it for like a year. <laughs> um, right. And then not being the main focal point, you may not get to see it at all because you've been cut from it. So it's always nice to go back to that. Like even the idea of just reading plays with friends, so much fun. Like you can feel that energy and you're just like, I'm so happy right now. Um, so yeah, so it's always, I feel like it's always a matter of like keep stoving that fire though. Like you have to, especially in a time like this where you're just stuck. Absolutely. Talk about a, a, a normal day on set for us. Oh. And for okay. the families and the kids watching, you know, how <laughs> we have a lot of kids, especially because the community theater we deal with. So take us through a day in the life of being on set. Okay. Um, usually it starts super early. <laughs> um, you're always told expect a 12 hour day of some sort. Um, but depending, I'll give you an example of working out of town, working in Dallas. So you're put up, you know, in a place because you're away from home. So a vehicle comes and picks you up and you get in a car and they drive you to set, um, which is always how you start your day. Like, it's like, if that's the first person I'm seeing, please be upbeat, please be happy. And usually they are, They're usually great people. Um, so you're excited. That kind of, that kind of, again, stoves that kind of fire in you. Like, you're amped up and feeding off of your energy already. Um, you know, you go through breakfast right away. Joy of working on a film set is there are so many options of food to eat. Um, the trap right. services is amazing. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so amazing. It's so much, though. Like, it's overwhelming. Um, but it's always funny because after I end a show, my house looks like a crafty truck for, like, a month. Because I'm just like, oh, I had those snacks and those snacks and those snacks. Um... But yeah, eat breakfast. Usually you'll have your sides already, so you're already going through what you're shooting for the day or you're catching uh, any changes that were made, like, immediately. So you can get the freak out out, which I always feel like if I see a little change, I'm like, oh, my God, what, what's going to happen? Like, But you have time to get that out of you. Um, so the sides and the, the fixed things. So at the end of the previous okay. day, you would get your breakdown for the next day. Absolutely. Like kind of the, the plan, because, you know, Absolutely. in the arts, we plan and we figure everything out and then things happen. Right. So in the morning, you get an updated things of what's going to happen during the day. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, and the joy of that is usually the way it's compiled is like schedules on the front. Everything that you're doing for the day, your lines, everything else is in the back. So you kind of just have this beautiful, it, I, it works so well. Like logistically, I love the way film sets work because it's done. So, so many people touch it to where it's done so smoothly that it's nice. Um, so the freak out's always minor because someone else has already thought of all these issues and problems. Um, then you go to your trailer, which being low on the totem pole it's usually a room that's as big as a closet <laughs> um but you you walk in there and again so much is done for you like your wardrobe's nicely pressed and it's sitting in this bag and your shoes and everything that you're wearing for the day in this bag and they're like yeah just go ahead and change just go ahead change into your wardrobe and then again the idea of so many other people are doing so many other things for you. A props person will knock on the door and be like, hey, these are your props for the day. And it's in a nice little box and you're trying them on to make sure everything fits if you missed your fitting for some reason. And then you kind of just play the waiting game because a lot of our businesses hurry up and wait. <laughs> and then you finally get that knock on the door. It's like, hey, hair and makeup, we'll see you now. So then you go in the hair and makeup trailer. And again, you're meeting these beautiful artists that have done so much and like, that you know from some great film that you enjoyed the hair and makeup on there. So you're chatting about that. They honestly have no idea who you are. So they're very kind to you over the fear of you might be somebody important one day. So I'm going to be nice to you. <laughs> um, but they're usually really great. And again, it's the idea of like someone good natured when you meet them, it makes you feel better. Absolutely. So it adds so much to what's going on. And then also it's kind of exciting to kind of be pampered like that in a way. Um, 
And then after your hair and makeup, you go to set. So you hop you in a van, drive you to set. Um, and then you have a quick introduction with the director, which this is the difference between theater and film. Usually you spend so much time with the director in theater that you build this bond. Film, you have maybe 10 minutes of talking to that person <laughs> because everything is on a schedule and a time crunch and everything else. Yeah. So you have to be prepared in such a different way. Like it's like the moment they say, hey, hair and makeup's ready to see you, you've got to be prepared then because you may not get another chance to look at that script again or to go through the beats that you want or your intent again. So it's like, once that moment happens, it's game time. Um, but the funny thing about that is how often you're pulled out of that moment by the people that are still kind of crimping a little bit and by the lighting and everything that's happening around you. And then they're like, all right, let's try one. They say action and you work. Um, and then they say cut, they adjust the lights. So you're pulled in and out of that moment so much. But like, so hopefully you're lucky that your scene partner is giving you so much that when you're pulled out of that moment, both of you are engaging still. Like, cool, we know what we want to do. Like, that was great. Let's try this. Blah, 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 blah. And that's the beauty of the work. Because like I said, where you get the instant gratification from theater is you're in the moment all the time. You get to work on such a different level doing film because you're just adding those little nuances or you're, you have the option to change things up right in the moment. And it's such a joy because you're like, I can give you so many different versions of this because you're just gonna pick the one you like anyway. So I might as well go for broke. Um, and there's a beauty in that. Um, and then you have the, the unceremonious wrapping you out. Actually, it's kind, but I always say it's unceremonious because you, you lose that feeling immediately. And you're like, all right, that's great. That's a wrap on, you know that guy and so you're like oh <laughs> and then you get in the van and you go home um but usually 12 hours 14 hours have probably passed in all of those moments um i don't know but it's exciting like the energy is up you don't notice that 14 hours have just passed because there's so much going on there's so much to take in um i don't know there's a joy in it i enjoy it it's addictive it is, it really is. And the level of things I've done have been mainly low totem pole. You know, right. extras are the lowest on the totem pole, really and truly. You know, we get the meals, but we don't get craft services. We, right. you know, we, we get the meals most of the time. It depends on how long you work. Um, right. But it's, it is a very long day. I've seen 12 to 16 hour days. Absolutely. I've been on set at 2 a.m. before like yep. arriving to set for a night shoot for whatever reason um i filmed in new orleans for a green lantern i don't know if i actually want to claim that movie or not it was fantastic to be involved in such a big budget movie right um, it was in the summer i was a teacher so i was off so i had nothing else to do but run around the cbd of new orleans in july heat <laughs> it was miserable. <laughs> it so. was crazy, but they took care of us. We would, um, the parallax thing was over whatever city we were in. So right. it was supposed to be shady. So we started filming at sunup. So we, that's right. one of those early sets we had to be on like 4 a.m. and be that's ready right. for the sun to just peak so it looked like there was shade. And then right. we finished filming about midday. So he tried to take care of us. Um, I was right. treated really well on a set like that, um, but the best I have been treated was on a Battleship. I was a stand-in. So yeah. for people who are the actor, you know, I would be brought on wearing the same costume as someone else, as one of the leads, and they would test the camera angles and all that stuff for us. And right. then they were like, okay, thank you. And then the main actor would come on, we'd high five, you know, and then they would do what they have to do. I have a horrible story about being a stand-in. <laughs> yes, tell us. But that was the highest, that's the best I've been treated with someone like that. Right. So as you go up, you know, the treatment is nice, but none of it's really glamorous work unless you're making the millions. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's your story? So uh, no one explained to me what a stand-in did. They basically were just like, all right, so you're the second team. and you hear second team, you come out, you do your thing. I said, okay. And they handed me again, sides. And I had seen them. I had been an actor before. 
So I open it and I learned that person's lines. In my mind, second team meant understudy. So they called second team out and I start going through all the beats and go through all the motions and regurgitate these guys' lines and no one stopped me. I just heard snickering from the camera crew. But no one said a thing. So I had done this all day. I was acting my little heart out all day long. And finally, one of the producers was sitting at Video Village, which all the monitors, so they can watch all the day, it's basically what Video Village is, um, sitting there, and he finally was like, wait, stop, cut. And so the director's like, why are you cutting on my face? What is this kid doing? And so the camera guys start uproariously laughing, like, like, he's been doing it all day, boss. And they're like, why didn't I just hire this kid to do it then? And so the actor heard that and just put his head down. And it was just the most awkward situation ever. And still it didn't dawn on me that that's not what I was supposed to be doing. So then finally a grip walks by and he's carrying this pole in his hand. He's like, yeah, buddy, you just, you just sit there, keep your mouth shut and they set up the lights. And he pats me on the back and walks off. And I was like, I'm so embarrassed right now. So that was my moment as a stand-in. Um, Good learning experience again. The good, uh, I guess, the interesting thing about Battleship was one, it didn't do great either. So <laughs> I don't have a great track record of stellar films I've been involved with, but the scene I did was the after credit scene. Oh, that's cool. So it was. It was really cool. Yeah. We were in uh, Port Allen, right, right outside Baton Rouge. Right. And the alien pod egg thing had landed in a field and we were in Scotland. So we were in a field of some tall grass and they had hired some sheep. So there were sheep walking around and the little actors were 15 um, from Scotland. So we were supposed to be there, but right. I'm short. I'm only five, six. So, <laughs> so I was hired because I was a short dude to put, yeah. stand in for this teenage boy. Uh, it was, I was like, you know, that was humbling too. Yeah. that experience but you know it was an experience and i got to be on a film set and i'm from a small town as we talked about right. earlier and my goal was you know what i want to be in film i want to be in the movies and you know what i pursued it and i did it you know right. i never said i wanted to be a movie star but i had a dream i chased it and i achieved it so anyone can do it as well even if you're from absolutely. louisiana or a small town absolutely so I feel like no, that's that's such a big deal though of like it's hard to call yourself an artist if you refuse to do art. Absolutely. Um, so like the idea of you saying like in my mind, that's what I want. It's like you went out, you accomplished that. Most artists don't follow through. And <laughs> it's so scary to watch and it's so like discouraging. Cause I feel like I open my day up by trying to encourage people like do something like your mission if you choose to accept do this thing um so it always bums me out when people don't follow through i absolutely love your mission if you choose to accept it your post <laughs> about glad. that um in fact i saw one of your most recent ones and it's so important right now it's one of your most recent ones it says your mission if you choose to accept it if you can reach out your hand and give someone an opportunity Remember the days while you were hustling, building towards your grind, you just wish someone would give you a shot. You are now that someone. Change the game. Hashtag 2020 vision, which is so true. Someone in life, it gave us our first break. It gave yep. us an opportunity. You got your first shot at being a stand-in. You were inexperienced. They laughed at you, but you know what? You learned from it. You got up. You moved on. That's so much about that first shot. There's a lot to right. learn, you know, and it's you know, persevering is what makes the difference. Absolutely. I feel like I've been so lucky. My entire career in everything I've ever done has been built off of someone else giving me a shot. Um, even my first medic job in film, I'm an incredible medic. I had no idea how to be a film medic, mm -hmm. which was different. I didn't, I didn't know the difference in it until my very first day could have been my last day. I had someone come up to me and they said, uh, hey, can I have an emergency? And I was like, what's the emergency? 
And they're like, no, 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 no. It's a little powder thing. It's got vitamin C in it and all these other vitamins and blah, 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 blah. And I literally, like, fresh out of the army, like, it doesn't even so it's going to dissolve the moment you put it in water. And that comment went around the set so fast that they were calling people looking for other, other medics. They're like, this guy doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to deal with us. He doesn't know how to pamper us. But this wonderful makeup artist walked up to me and she was like, sweetie, I know you know this job. She's like, I watched you help that guy the other day. It was incredible. Come here. <laughs> like, I'm going to help you. And literally gave me the box of pampered things medics need to have with them on set. And it was like, every time they ask for it, just give it to them. It's no big deal. Think of yourself as like a cabana boy. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and that was it. But if she would have never made that gesture, I would have lost the job and probably never got another one again because of the way news travels in the entertainment industry. Absolutely. You know, we know our jobs. When you're starting a new job or starting something new, just like when we were starting college, uh, studying theater, we learned it's an entire different, it's an entirely different ball game than we first Absolutely. perceived it. You know, Absolutely. there's there's a learning curve in starting anything new, but yep. you can do it. You just have to persevere. Right. But think of how much uh, further ahead you are when that person does extend their hand and be like, you know what? I'm going to take some time on you. Like, I can't give it all to you, but I'm going to try and help as much as I possibly can. Um, Absolutely. That's incredible. And I don't understand why that's not such an, a simple concept, especially where we are now. Like, it's 2020. Like, I don't think I ever envisioned one day I would be able to say that year. And now we're in 2020. And it's like, we still have people that are missing the idea of like, yeah, this is my piece of pie, but I can cut that piece of pie in half and give you a piece of it. And now I'm feeding you. Like, it blows my mind that people just don't do that. Um, you know, in the arts, we're supposed to be such a family and bond and all work together. You know, we, a lot of the artists I know and have worked with are willing to go out their way and to help you, which has been such a great asset in my life um, and in learning people take the time but I wish more of society in a whole would not point and laugh per se right. in, the, in the, the grand scheme of things but be like hey I know you're trying and struggling let me give you a pointer let me help you out a little bit like being kind to someone shouldn't be a radical concept oh it amazes me though how it is like the weird looks and stuff you get from just being like come on man i'll help you out like i am such a weird i'm an overpacker completely so if we're on set and it's a rainy day i'll always have two jackets and i'll always see that one person who's just sitting there shivering and i'm like i got another jacket here you can have it and i always get the oddest looks and i'm like it's a jacket it's fine well you may not get it back i don't care I'll just go get another jacket. Like, it's so interesting to see, though, the shock on people's face when you're just kind. Um, and I always feel like being kind to someone is how those doors open for you. Like, Absolutely. no one ever remembers the jerk. They're always like, that guy was really cool. Um, no, they remember him for all the wrong reasons. And right. like he said, it goes around that circle real quick. Absolutely. And then no one wants to work with them. The, the more I go along in this business, the more I realize how small it is. Yeah. It so. is insane how small this business is. And you don't think about it and as a whole. You're like, oh, this is all of America. This is everything or the world in general. Right. I know people who work all over the world who have come from the, the schools I've attended or people I've worked with. You never know right. who knows someone. No, it's so it's crazy. crazy. Like, 2018, I had a really good year. So I did, uh, I did a television series, Queen of the South, in Dallas. But I also did this boxing film. And just hit it off with my co-star. I thought she was so awesome. We plan, we plan on working together again in the future. Obviously, 2020 has been shut down a bit. But it was so great. Just connection. She hopped on a plane, went back to L.A., and three days later, I see friends of mine in Los Angeles that are standing next to her and sending me pictures like, hey, look who we found. And I'm like, how is that possible? Um, loved it. Like, I was like, it's so awesome. But yeah, such a small business. It's frightening. 
It really is. Now you have a son, right? I do. Yeah. How do you balance, you know, your life, your, your film career, which right. as we talked about takes a good chunk of your day. How do you balance Absolutely. that with uh, raising a child? Um, delicately. <laughs> um, I feel like time management is such a big deal, which again, is something in this business that you have to think about. Also something you have to think about by being a multi hyphenate. I'm so glad I got to say that out loud. Um, you have to basically time out every hour of the day and just know what you're dedicating your time to, and then be very direct about, no, you can't have any more of my time. Um, but again, I feel like that comes with the idea and concept I said earlier is say yes to everything until you can afford to say no. Those early years, I am so lucky. He and uh, his mother and I are incredible co-parenters. Like we just, we get an A in co-parenting. Um, so those early days were very lean on my time of being able to spend with him. But she was just this incredible like force of like it's okay we'll get it taken care of um and then i'd find those openings where i could like he's been on i think almost every set i've ever worked on um which is so funny i always tell him i was like you know once upon a time you watch a bus get explode like you were right there i think you were napping through the whole thing and he's kind of like well obviously i don't remember um but he's 12 now. So like, there's so much time where I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go do this. And he's like, all right, see you later. Um, yeah. He's at that age where he's like, mm, whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah. If I'm not a video game, he doesn't care. <laughs> um, but it's so good. My like, nephews, my nephew, I have two nephews close to the same age. Ex they're exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Bye. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, so, yeah. I don't know. It's just it, time management. I could say. Yeah. The arts are really demanding on your time, you know, um, even in theater, if doing it in community theater is one thing, that's everyone's extra time, people are doing it in the evenings, you know, but going into it for a career, it's, it's very demanding. It's your eight hours a day working, strictly working, but then you go home and you still have to memorize your lines and still work on that. If you're involved in more than one project, always prepping for the next, you might be right. reading new scripts or learning line for something else or learning your lines for the next scene. It's a never ending demand of your time. Right. Yeah. But so I what feel does, like, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, um, what does he think about dad working in the movies? I think he thinks it's cool. He's always known it. So he just thinks it's cool. Um, I've spoken to his school about working in films. And so it's nice to see that my kid still talks about me around his friends. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think he just, like, it's not, it's not a far reach job for him. Uh, I think the joy is he just got into theater last year. So I think he has a little bit more understanding of like, oh, like, I know what's going on right now. Um, I know he did props for a show that he enjoyed doing that. Um, but their play actually got canceled because of covid but his teacher so great had them all do their scenes from that and recorded them all and sent it out to all the parents so oh. so awesome um i was like oh i got an actor on my hands hopefully um yeah i don't know i think he's just used to it like he's been around it all the time what would uh what would you tell anyone what advice would you have for anyone pursuing a career in either theater or film um learn the business of it as well you know if you're a performer learn the business of theater learn the business of film if you're behind the stage or if you're behind the camera learn the business of what you're in and really treat it as that early like i there were so many bad habits i had to break because i didn't understand that it was a business um Keep, your, keep everything healthy, mind, body, spirit, keep it all healthy um, because you can get sucked in by perks. You know, theater has its own perks. Film has far too many perks that it becomes, you just don't know how to be normal if you're sucked into it for so long. Um, so be able to find an anchor, find something that grounds you, 
um, but also stay engaged. Like, if you're a performer, read, act, <laughs> do it all, like, as much as you possibly can, as often as possibly can, um, because it's like working a muscle. Um, and if you're, you know, behind the scenes of those things, work, work as much as you can, work everywhere you can. Like, it's so hard now with the way technology is set up for people to say, well, I, I can't, like, I can't do it. Yeah, I want to be an actor, but I can't get hired on anything. It's like, we have so much technology. Do you have a camera in your hand, in your, either in your hand or in your pocket? Shoot. <laughs> do it. Do your art. Like, find a platform for your art, even if it's not where you want to be right now. Because mm -hmm. out of that, showcasing your talent to someone will open another avenue. Um, and, and it gives you experience. Time. Absolutely. And when you see that avenue, take it. It may not take you where you want to go. You know, if you would have asked me back when we were in college, all I wanted to do was be an actor. But that wasn't the road that was in front of me. I took another path. And it led me right back to being an actor again. Like, I never had to let go of anything. I just had to travel a longer way to get there. Um, and that's what I would say. Like, it's hard. It is hard to be in this business. It is hard to be a personality type that wants to be in this business. But understand, it's going to be hard, and that's okay. Um, you know, and there are a lot of people that will discourage you because it's hard, because they can't fathom continuously pursuing that because, wow, that sounds really hard. You know, it's kind of like exercise. Not everybody likes to exercise. It's hard. Um, but... Keep the path. If another path opens, take that path. If it gets you back around to where you wanted to go, you're still doing what you set out to do. Um, Absolutely. You know, learning as much as you can, like you said, read scripts, study absolutely. movies, study directors, study playwrights, look yep. at other actors, do whatever research you can. You have a wealth of knowledge at your fingertips just by being online, but also uh, get involved in community theater. When I was um, talking with agents or representatives out there in the real world, like major agencies, they were critiquing resumes. And the people in front of me, I was listening, because always listen to what they're telling people. It might pertain to you too. They will look at the resumes and tell them, you have great film work, but you have no theater. Go get theater right. and come talk to me later. So when I got <laughs> up to them, they were like, great, you have theater, you have film, fantastic, keep doing what you're doing. Right. You know, it's study everything you can or learn every avenue. If you want to be on stage and you're not cast in something, say, can I work backstage? Can I yeah. work? Let me learn about hair and makeup. Let me learn about costumes. Let me learn about stage management. Let me learn about lights. Just be in the business. Learn as much as you can. Because just like you said earlier, someone might be standing by you and be like, hey, we need someone to do this. And you might be working lights, but you're like, hey, I know how to do that. Right. And then you get into it or they remember who you are and they'll call you for the next job and call you for the next one. So learn as many skills as possible. You never know where that path is going to take you and where you'll end up with it. Absolutely. Well, Greg, I'll thank you for your time. You gave a lot of <laughs> great insights for the theater and for film and how it all kind of plays together. Do you have any final parting nuggets of wisdom for us uh yes be obsessive and intentional in everything you do uh it'll never steer you wrong <laughs> well thank you greg i hope you have a, a good afternoon and uh thanks for your knowledge today absolutely thank you so much thanks Bye.